Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Starfield. My name is Camel. In this video today, the first thing we're going to do is look at a loading screen. For over a century, there have been accounts of a vigilante bounty hunter named the Mantis, who terrorizes the criminal underworld. The Mantis, how mysterious. Well, not for long, as today I will be showing you how to become the Mantis in a detailed walkthrough. You will be getting a full set of unique legendary armor, and you will also get an absolutely awesome spaceship called the Razorleaf, all for free. And you can do this at any level if you've got the skill and the know-how. And on top of all of that, you will also mantle the persona of the Mantis, which has many interesting encounters related to it. We'll run through those towards the end of the video. Now, if this kind of stuff interests you, my other Starfield videos can be found down in the description via the Starfield playlist link. And down there, you can also find all of my social media links. Be sure to help me out and check those out after the video. But without further hesitation, let's grab jump straight into becoming the mythical mantis so the first thing we're going to need to do is actually get the quest the mantis to do this we will need to go to the soul system this can be found right here on the star map once here we will need to go to earth or more specifically to the nova galactic star station which is above in orbit earth's moon which in starfield is called luna if you don't have it pop up as a location you can travel to the moon to luna and then from there you'll be able to see the star station so now that we're here, now that we've arrived at the Nova Galactic Star Station above Earth's moon, if we try to hail the star station, all we'll get back is static. Which, in space, is never a good sign. So we're going to have to go and inspect. So you'll want to dock with the Nova Galactic Star Station and head on inside. Once we arrive inside, pretty much instantly, we can see something pretty bad's happened here. Now this area is pretty big and it is filled with spaces and ecliptic mercenaries. They will be fighting each other, they will be fighting you. There's going to be a lot of shooting and a lot of enemies. For the sake of this video, I've cleared out all the enemies and I'll show you how to get to the quest really easily and quickly. But just be warned, there will be a lot of fighting on here, so come prepared for that. So from the very entrance where we board the Nova Galactic Star Station in the first place, we just want to run forward and to this door, which goes through to the Nova Galactic Star Yard. So once we enter here, we want to walk forward towards the Nova Galactic sign on the wall and then turn right. Then we just want to run down this hallway straight ahead until we reach the conference room. Once we reach the conference room, we need to turn right down towards the medical ward. In the medical ward right there on the ground, we can see a dead spacer in a golden spacesuit. What we want to do is loot this spacer, where on their body we can find the slate titled Secret Outpost. We want to take this, and this will give us the quest The Mantis, which is telling us to read the slate, so we will do just that. We'll have to go into our inventory, into the notes section, where we can find the Secret Outpost slate, which reads, Loyal to your crew? I get it. But screw that. Beg, borrow, steal, kill to get to Denebola 1B. There is a secret outpost we're trying to crack, once in a lifetime opportunity. You will regret it for the rest of your life if you don't get your ass over here. Once we read that, we can see the mission is updated and yeah, we need to get our ass to the secret outpost at Denebola 1B. So if you open up the star map, we can see that it is found right here. If you have the Mantis as your active quest, you will have the quest marker on it, which will make it very easy to find, but it's just to the right of the Cheyenne star system. It shouldn't be too hard to get to, although if you are low level, you'll probably have to make a few different jumps to get here, but it really is no sweat at all. Once in the star system, we just follow the quest marker, we can see there is Denebola 1B. Select the moon and then go to the bottom of the planet where we can find the secret outpost. If you don't have the quest, this location will not be here for you. Of course, you want to select it and land there. Once we do land and exit the ship, there will be a couple of spaces, probably five to ten or so, across the whole outside area. Obviously, take them out. And in the middle, there is a big circular bay door. What could be coming out of there later? Well, we'll find out. Now, once you've taken care of the initial spaces, we want to just run straight ahead towards the bay door, then turn to the left. Obviously, this is made very easy because you just follow the quest marker. But once you come around this corner, there will be some spaces out here. Take care of them. Once you do, just walk up to the door, which is the lair of the mantis. It won't be locked or anything. Just head straight on inside. As soon as we enter, we can overhear two spaces musing about the mantis. Who 
knows what we'll find. This is a bad idea. Okay, so in the next room, take out these two spaces, and then on the wall, we can find an automated message. You're doing well, Leon. Almost there. I know. Things have been difficult. The mantle of the Mantis is a heavy burden. But you can do so much good. The spacers and pirates need someone to fear. Someone to check them to make them realize some lines cannot be crossed. You have it in you, Leon. I know you do. Stay sharp, focused, just a little further. Now, just below this automated message on one of the space's bodies, we can find a slate called Lair Slate, the gold mine. This reads, the lair is a gold mine the Mantis was loaded, the salvage top notch. And the good stuff's got to be further in. The payout's going to be extreme. Just got to survive until then. Traps took out Carver and Young. Livy volunteered a couple of others from Iron Dave's crew. Poor bastards. Just got to stay off Livy's radar. And if we look around, we will notice there are already a lot of dead spaces and a lot of body bags that appear to be full. So it seems that a lot of spaces have been killed trying to infiltrate this lair of the Mantis. Further in, down the hallway, we will find another dead spacer, although he's dead because we killed him. On his corpse, we can find another slate, Leon Verclain, Sic Semper Tyrannus, translating to thus always to tyrants, which contemporarily means tyrannical leaders will inevitably be overthrown. So I met with a lawyer and was prepared to party. Hard. The video will was emotional. Mom and I stopped talking years ago. Mom didn't look good, but it was Mom. As weird, crazy, and cryptic as ever. I'm almost surprised she remembered she even had a son. It was hard to hear, almost touching. But then the punchline, no inheritance until I go to Mom's secret base on Denabolo 1B. And she ends not with an I love you or an I'm proud of you. No. Six Semper Tyrannus. Oh my god. Always with that stupid Latin saying. Over and over she'd say that damn thing. Thanks, Mom. Thanks oh so much. And as the plot thickens, I will say from here on, there's just like 20, 30 spaces. We won't run through every room or we'll be here forever. So just keep going down and we'll stop when we find any more slates or information. A short way deeper, we can find a spacer who has a slate on them called Spacer Communication 1. What could be on this? Let's have a listen. Listen up, scumbags. The assholes are on the move and we've got to be ready. No, not the UC, not the Freestar Collective. The ones that matter. Pirates, mercs, and those religious nut jobs. We always knew there were some places left over from the colony war. Bases, labs, stuff like that. But now it's come out that there are even more. A lot more. Spread all over the settled systems. Looks like the big two didn't play by their own rules when they were playing war. Now it's a friggin' feeding frenzy. Everyone trying to find them. Trying to use them. So why shouldn't we? We have just as much right as they do. So let's go looking. Well, they went looking and they found quite a prize. Although, of course, we will claim it. Deeper in on the stairs, we can find another spacer who has a slate on them called Lair Slate, Leon's Corpse, which reads, found Leon's dead body. Looks like one of the damned traps got him too. Big fight over his body until Iron Dave broke it up. Managed to grab his cred stick though, so bonus. Gotta wonder if the Mantis's own son got nixed. How can we do any better? And just down the stairs a little further, there is more Space Scum. Literally, that's their name, Space Scum. On them, we can find a slate called Leon Verclain. Mantis revealed. The Mantis? No way. I mean, the Mantis is a fairy tale. Someone to keep pirates from going off the deep end. I... I guess it's possible. She never talked about where she got her fortune. And man, she could handle herself anywhere. It's... a lot to take in. So Leon's mum was the Mantis and he didn't even know. Oh well, doesn't really matter anymore. As we learned from the other slate, Leon kinda... bit the dust. 
Now, further into the lair of the Mantis, we'll come out into this kind of big industrial room that has a lot of spaces in it, and this guy at the end of the room who's either really good at Tai Chi or scared. And in the middle, lying on the ground, we can also find the corpse of Leon Verclain, the Mantis's son. On his corpse, we can find Leon Verclain's final recording. Poor little fella, killed by his own mum, kind of. As sad as that is, let's talk to the scared dude, Livy. Wait, wait, don't shoot! I am unarmed! Look, we can help each other. I can be useful. Just don't kill me. Tell me who you are. Livy, and I mean you, uh, no harm. This place was full of traps. Traps everywhere. I removed them. But this, this corridor is just too dangerous. See? Looks normal. One step inside, slam! You are trapped, and nobody's been standing after the doors reopen. Looks like this place really tore you guys apart. It's true. So many of my crewmates are gone. Uh huh. And this corridor is the worst. But I figured it out. There are letters on the floor. It is a grid. Those letters must spell something. But there are so many words or small phrases. How many words have you tried? Five? Six? It's hard to find... Uh, volunteers. I really thought we had it with M. Mantis. Oh, poor Fred. Letters, eh? Huh, you're smarter than you look. Why does everyone always say that? See? I've been helpful. You... you could let me go. Or better, I can help. I know these traps. I know how this Mantis thinks. Please, let me help and just give me a taste of the cachet inside. You can trust me. I like to think of myself as a merciful person, and I love giving people the benefit of the doubt. But I don't know about this one. Sure, you can have all of the cachet, as that word doesn't exist. Cash. The cash, on the other hand, not a finger. However, betray me and you will die. We'll choose this option because it has the most satisfying conclusion spoken like a true spacer you won't regret this i will hold back here and well good luck okay so from here we just want to go through this door and i would highly suggest you save the game as it's very very easy to accidentally die even if you know what you're doing as we can see, there is a room, a long room, with letters all over the floor and dead bodies all over the floor, as at the back of the room there are four turrets. Now I came in here at level 9 and did this, so I was probably underleveled, and those turrets killed me very, very quickly. So I would highly suggest saving it. Now again, I swear I did this correctly and something went wrong and the turrets killed me again very, very quickly. So once more, I would highly suggest that you save the game before entering this room, just in case something goes wrong, which it can do very easily, even if you think you've done everything correctly. Now around the corner from this hallway, there is actually a computer that can turn off the turrets. However, you will need master lock picking to unlock it and do so. So if you don't have that, don't worry, I've got the solution for you. So as Levy said, we need to step on certain letters to spell out a phrase or a word or something to get through this room successfully. But which word to use? Ah, well, remember the Mantis's son's name? Yeah, well, it's not that. Instead, it is the last part of Sic Semper Tyrannus, that being Tyrannus. T-Y-R-A-N-N-I-S. So as you walk on each layer, only step on the corresponding tiles to spelling this word out. If you do this successfully, you will walk through just fine. The turrets won't attack you. And once you get up on the other side, just click the button at the top of the stairs and that will open the gate and you will be through safely. And then your follower and Livy can both come through as well. Now from here until we become the Mantis, there are probably between 10 and 15 robots and turrets as a combination, as a group. So if you do have any weapons or great ways to kill robots, bring those with you because some of these robots are pretty tough. Um, and this is where I had the most challenge getting through this as a level nine character. So once you've taken care of all the robots and turrets, we will find another automated message on the wall. I am sorry I could never show this lair to you. 
The lair is a secret that's been passed down for over a hundred years. And there are rules. You remember when you were a teenager? All the training, the drills, all of it was to prepare you for this. I know you have it in you, Leon. Another sweet message from Mum. So when we move on through the next hallway, we will hear the door behind us close. Livy's locked us in here, and <laughs> Sierra's actually locked in there with him. Don't think that's meant to happen. <laughs> Thank you! Now the treasure of the Mantis will be mine! <laughs> it will be... Wait, turn off! Turn off! <laughs> and with that, Livy has taken care of himself. Whew, he must be livid. Naturally, Sarah Morgan survives this because she's a tough cookie. Anyway, loot Livy's corpse and then shoot him in the ass cheek for being a pile of garbage. From here, we will enter this kind of control room where through the window, we can see a big kind of bat cave looking thing. This is where we will find our spoils of war. But fair warning, this big open area is filled with robots as well. And as we come out, we'll get another message from mum. Leon, you've done it. You're here. The lair now belongs to you. Inside, you will find all you need to be the Mantis, my darling boy. I haven't... I haven't been the best mother in these final days. I wish... Be a better Mantis. Be a better person than I was. Really quite sad, actually. Superhero mom could never reveal it to a kid, so they were distanced and they never spoke. Then he tries to mantle the mantis and he ends up dying through his mom's own creations. Oh, ah, well, screw that guy. We can now become the mantis. So from the big lair room, there's a lot to look at, but what we want to do first is turn to the left and then left again, where we can enter this door and then this next door into this kind of a living quarters area. Basically just go to the quest marker, where in this kind of equipment room, we will see a glass cabinet with a mannequin in it with a unique set of armor. Now save the game, don't touch it, save the game. The reason for this is that when you open the door and interact with the mannequin, all of the legendary effects on all three pieces of the Mantis's unique armor set will be randomly generated. So if you save the game before you touch it, you can keep reloading the save until you get a combination of legendary effects that you want. So again, save the game, open the door, have a look at all the armor pieces on the mannequin. If all of the effects look garbage to you and they're not what you want, just reload that save and keep doing this until you get a set of Mantis armor that you think will best benefit you and your playstyle and your character. I personally hate it when unique items have randomly generated effects that makes them uh, not so much unique and more of a slot machine, but here's my pro tip to kind of get around that and get the best set of Mantis armor that you can. So once you're happy with that, you have now physically become the Mantis. There is one more big piece to this puzzle and that is the spaceship but we'll get to the spaceship in a minute. As firstly, there is tons of valuable loot in here, so you might have to do a couple of trips back and forth if you want to take everything with you. And secondly, for some Mantis lore, we can find a computer in the living area called Dorian's Computer. On here, we will find four files, the first of which is Scorched Earth, warning. Admin alert, please log off this computer. Process Scorched underscore Earth has detected three unclosed documents, warning. You have one hour to comply before admin override. The second is titled, You've Earned It. Dorian, you must have thought I was crazy, but now you see, right? Of all the people I could have chosen, I know you will fill the role of Mantis the best. In these computers, you will find the history of the Mantis. What the Mantis is today, it wasn't always the case. When reading the logs about the first Mantis, don't judge her too harshly. It was a volatile time, and before she passed the mantle, she recognized that the mantis could be more than an opportunity to make money. It could be a symbol. Make the settled system safer. Strike fear into the heart of those that believe they are above the law, above reproach. But most importantly, keep the secrets safe. Now I'm off to retirement. Don't try to contact me. You won't be able to find me. I've left all you need here. Signed, the former mantis. The third entry is titled First Kill, which reads, I've been forced to take lives before, but this was the first time I did so as the Mantis. It felt different. I was scared. 
more about letting everyone down than the fight itself. At one point, the Mantis's ship, the Razorleaf, was light years above everyone else's, and she still flies well and true, but it's clear that I need to upgrade pretty much everything inside it. The hull's what matters though, that's the symbol. But in the end, I got the better of Redera. I imagine there will be celebrations in the streets of Aquila City, total scum. But I can't shake the feeling that tracker work is at its heart murder for pay. I'm not sure why the old Mantis chose me, but pretty much every Mantis has said that. Signed, DV. And the fourth entry is titled About Leon, which reads, I've been going through the motions of living, fighting, and carrying on, but all I can think of is, you have a year to live, Dory. It plays over and over in my head. I can smell the office, see the sad flat eyes of the doctor. Details come back to me at the oddest times. It puts everything in stark relief. What's important, what's not. The most important thing is choosing the right successor. And I know Leon could do it. I have failed him so much. The job always seemed so pressing. If I'm brutally honest with myself, the nannies and boarding schools raised him more than I. But there is greatness in him. If only he could see it. I'm going to talk with my lawyer first thing when I get in system. The wheels need to be set in motion. I'm having a good day today. I feel so normal but I'm walking through the whole world like it's a cloud. Signed, DV. DV, of course, being Dorian Vaclain, the previous Mantis, Leon Vaclain's mother. And there is one other computer we can find. However, this has nothing of note on it. While there are three files, when we click on all of them, it just says scorched earth, uh, everything turning off, everything being wiped. So don't worry about this computer. And now we have the full backstory to the Mantis. We have the Mantis set of unique legendary armor. The last thing to claim is the Mantis's ship, the Razorleaf. To do this, we need to head down to the bottom of the Starship lift, where we will find a yellow switch, which we need to switch. This will open those huge circular bay doors we saw earlier and push the Razorleaf up to ground level. So for us to get back to ground level, we need to go out the way we came in. But instead of going down the hall where Livy killed himself, we need to enter this elevator here. Click the button. It only goes to one floor, which is right here. There is a locked door, but to the left, there is a computer, which we can use to open the security door. Once the door is open, just head through, and this will basically be back at the beginning of the Lair of the Mantis, where we first heard the two spaces having a chat. Exit the facility and then head out back to basically where we landed the ship or more specifically to the giant circular landing bay doors, which will now have been replaced with the Razor Leaf. As we approach the Razor Leaf, we will finish the Mantis quest where we get a bunch of credits and some XP. So the last thing to do is claim the ship for ourselves. So head inside, go into the cockpit and sit in the captain's chair. Once your designated driver lift off and the Razor Leaf is all yours. Now, if like me, the only other ship you really used was the Frontier, the Razor Leaf will feel like a massive upgrade. We'll go through actual stat comparisons in a minute, but overall, not only have you become kind of the superhero of Starfield, but you will feel like it flying this ship. Now, if this is your first time getting another ship beyond the Frontier, don't worry, you still have the Frontier. If you go to the menus and to the bottom left to ships, here you can cycle through all of the ships that you own, which as you can see, the Frontier is in there. As soon as you pick up a new ship, whatever ship you were using just goes into your fleet. And if you want to change which ship you are using as your main ship or your home ship, just go to any ship services tech. They can be found in all major cities and settlements. Click on, I would like to view and modify my ships. Then here you just cycle through your ships and down in the bottom right, you can see make home ship. Click on that and whatever ship you had selected will now be your home ship. Now, in terms of stat comparisons, at the moment, I have the Frontier set as my home ship. So now that I have the Razor Leaf selected, we can see over in the top right in the ship systems, all of the blue bars are the ways in which the Razor Leaf is better than the Frontier. 
So it's got four more overall power. Its particle weapons are two bars more powerful. Its engine is four bars more powerful. Shield one bar and grab drive one bar as well. So it's not a crazy upgrade, but it is free and it is an upgrade. It's also important to note that while it does have slightly less cargo capacity, it does have 160 shielded cargo capacity. Now shielded cargo is important and something you'd probably be picking up mid game or late game otherwise. What is shielded cargo? Well, if you have contra bands, that being illegal items, in your ship's cargo, well when you enter UC or Freestar space and they scan your ship for contrabands, if the contraband is in your ship's cargo, there's a chance that they will miss it. So the fact that the Razor Leaf has shielded cargo is great because I feel like it's often overlooked that it has that at all, and also it can be hard to find otherwise. As to get it, well you gotta deal with some dodgy folk. But here with a Razor Leaf you get it for free. Now before we move on from the Razor Leaf, if you get up out of the captain's chair and then head upstairs, there's actually a big weapon and armor display room and while most of the weapon cases and armor displays are empty, there are a few pieces of armor and a few weapons and ammunition lying around in the ship already, so be sure to grab those. Overall, the Razor Leaf is a really cool ship. You will use it non-stop all of the early game and I would say fair chunk of the mid game as well. I probably used the Razor Leaf for about 100 hours. Well, you probably won't use it the entire game. It will serve you very well for a very long time. And if you get it at like level nine, like I did, bruh, I felt like a god. But you know, at some point you'll move on to some serious big boy ships or create your own monstrosity like I did here last night with the Zillog. <laughs> a name as ugly as the ship itself. But now let's talk about the armor. Aesthetically, I think the Mantis armor looks pretty cool. I think it would have been a bit cooler and a bit more vigilantly superhero-y if it wasn't white, but hey, whatever, that's how it looks. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the only set of Mantis armor in the game and there's no other armor that shares this appearance. So in that sense, it is unique. My favorite thing about the Mantis armor is when you turn on the headlamp, the light comes out of the visor and creates this cool X symbol. Elon Musk would love it. But is the Mantis armor actually good? Well, it's kind of hard to say as in Starfield, I feel like no set of armor is leagues above any other set of armor. They're all kind of pretty close, so you can pretty much wear whatever you want. Here we can see my character stats with the Mantis armor and my character stats with another set of legendary armor that I got through another quest line. And as we can see, the Mantis has slightly less physical resistance, slightly less energy resistance, slightly less EM resistance. It's got more thermal resistance, it's got slightly more airborne resistance, it's got less corrosive resistance, double the radiation resistance. So again, I feel like when you really add everything up and average it out, no set of armor is really that much better than any other set of armor. However, what makes the Mantis set of armor really special is that all three pieces, the helmet, the spacesuit, and the boost pack are all legendary, which means each piece has three legendary effects on it. So as a whole set, you're getting nine extra effects on your character. And if you use the save and reload method, like I showed you earlier, well, you can get a pretty damn powerful set of armor. So while the damage resistance and blah, 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 might be slightly better or slightly worse than another set of armor, where it really stands out is having nine bonus effects on top of that. Especially in the early game, that is going to be essentially impossible to compete with how good the Mantis armor is. But I would love to know which legendary effects your Mantis armor has or the legendary effects that you kept saving and reloading for. I was unaware of this method when I got the Mantis set of armor on my main character. So mine just have some random stats. So I'm hoping that through the method that I showed you, you can get the perfect set of Mantis armor for your character. And I would love to know what those perfect stats are for you and how that fits into your character build. So now you have the full story of the Mantis, all of the lore, all the backstory, and you have the legendary set of Mantis armor and the Mantis's legendary ship, the Razor Leaf. Now, while you can modify the Razor Leaf, as long as you keep the hull of the ship, other ships that you run into out in space can react to you being the Mantis, just like these spaces. Not only will spaces fear you, but you can get rewards from them. Scanning. <laughs> huh? What? Damn it, you're... You're the Mantis. It can't be. It can't be. You picked the wrong target, pal. I... Uh... Shit. Listen, I... Just go. Sorry to bother you. Here. Here's some credits. Please. Just... Don't kill me, alright? I got kids! 
kids. Like, so many kids of, of five, no, ten of them. Ten children. Ten kids? Rookie numbers. So tell me their names, all of them. Adam, uh, Anna, Alphonse, uh, Adele? A A Adam? Oh, I already said that. Please, please. I just want to live. Take this, please. It's every single credit I got. I promise. That's everything. Literally everything. Can I go now? Everything? Hmm, certainly you've got something left. Nothing. Cargo holds empty. The only thing I got is the shirt on my back. I promise. So you do have something left to give me. I want your shirt. Now. A shirt? Yes! Yes, of course! Here! Thank you for sparing me! Go! Go now! See ya, buddy. Thanks for coming. Thanks for the credits and thanks for your dirty, dirty shirt. Now, along with these kind of comical scenarios with spaces and pirates, you might just hear other NPCs or sources talking about the Mantis. I'm going to become a famous bounty hunter just like the Mantis. For over a hundred years, there have been tales of the fabled Mantis. The Mantis, supposedly, is a vigilante that would prey upon criminals and pirates. Even the most cutthroat of fleet pirates feared the Mantis. It has been many years since we've heard any report on the Mantis, until now. UC Security interrogated spacers who claimed that Mantis is back and thirsty for righteous vengeance. Security says that this is just the latest retelling of a ghost story. But for myself, I hope it's real. Go get him, Mantis. Now that is all of the Mantisy related dialogue that I've been able to find in game so far. I'm sure there's plenty more. And if you've found any interactions or just passing dialogues about the Mantis in Starfield that I didn't mention in this video, I would love for you to comment down below and let me know what they were and where you encountered them. And with that, you've now become the Mantis. You know the full backstory of the Mantis. You know how being the Mantis impacts the game around you. You've got a full set of legendary armor and a brand new ship, the Razorleaf. Congratulations, you have successfully become Starfield's superhero, the Mantis. I do hope that you have found this video helpful and I'd love to know what you think about the Mantis, what strange interactions about the Mantis you've encountered, and what the perfect stats are for your legendary unique set of Mantis armor. As I said, I didn't have the fortune of knowing that you could save and reload to get different effects, so I'm hoping that you have better luck there than I did. And of course, be sure to let myself and everyone else know if you know anything else Mantis related that I didn't cover in this video. Starfield is a colossal game filled with a million tiny details and hidden things. And I'd love to hear about what you find or what you figure out. If you did enjoy this video, please subscribe. Check out my other videos via the Starfield playlist link down in the description, where you can also find all of my social media links. Be sure to check all of them out. I've been Camel. I would like to thank you very much for watching and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon. Go get a mantis.